Hello and welcome everyone to this webinar. I want to briefly introduce myself to the ones who do not know me already. I'm Dr. Frank Richter and I have a background in nanotechnology and a PhD in chemistry from NTNU in Trondheim, Norway. I enjoy giving talks at international conferences and seminars. Two of my highlights this year were Future Mobility Asia in Bangkok and the Electric and Hybrid Marine World Conference in Amsterdam. So generally, I would say there's plenty of opportunity to meet. This year, there is still one conference coming up. It's the Battery Exports Forum in Germany. It's going to be between the 7th and 9th of November in Darmstadt. So if you want to listen to my talk about aging of lithium-ion batteries and also maybe have a personal chat, come to Darmstadt and there will be the opportunity. I have experience with maritime and with automotive battery development. I worked with maritime with Siemens in Trondheim and I worked in automotive with ACA, mainly with Volkswagen. If you want to have a look at my publications, you can find some of them in Electrochemica Acta and for example, the Journal of Power Sources. Today, I talk to you as the CEO of Green Actra, which is a coaching and consulting company within the lithium-ion battery development industry based in beautiful Tallinn, Estonia. So what do we want to do today? We want to have a look at the cathodes and we want to compare LFP and NMC. We want to compare the cathode structures. We look into energy densities and current rates. We look into the market at the moment. We look into special challenges with LFP. We look into aging of LFP and NMC batteries. And finally, we also have a look at the safety of the two technologies. So let's have a look at the LFP first. Lithium iron phosphate has a voltage of 3.45 volts versus lithium metal. Please be aware, these 3.45 volts, this is not the typical uh, nominal voltage within a graphite LFP-based lithium-ion battery. No, this is versus uh, lithium metal. The structure of LFP is a spinel structure which means we have a 3D mobility of the lithium ions within the LFP. You can imagine to have some channels, some 3D oriented channels within the LFP particles. LFP is a low cost. It was very low cost in the past. No, it's not that low cost anymore, but it's still cheaper than, for example, NMC. Well, it has a long cycle life and a great thermal and chemical stability. If we compare LFP to the first introduced lithium ion battery technology, which was LCO, we have around 15% lower of an energy density. LFP is considered to be very safe when mishandled, and very often we find the statement that LFP does not burn and not release any oxygen. But if we look into the literature, there are reports where LFP actually shows phase degradation and oxygen release at temperatures above 350 degrees Celsius. So keep that in mind. LFP can burn and LFP also can release oxygen. It's just a question of temperature. Okay. And the interesting question would be, hey, I mean, we see these reports and we know that LFP can uh, degrade and release oxygen at temperatures above 350 degrees Celsius. But was it, what is really the onset temperature for this phase degradation and oxygen release? And this is somewhere around 310 degrees Celsius. So 40 degrees lower than some of the reports which we find in the literature. Let's have a look at NMC or nickel manganese cobalt oxide. The voltage versus lithium metal is 3.8 volts, so it's a little higher. It's safe and cheaper than LCO, but you don't compromise too much on the performance of the battery cell. We don't have a 3D structure, we have a 2D structure. Basically, the NMC is oriented in layers. So you have like these NMC layers, and basically the lithium ions can move in between these layers. NMC 
2D players, so to say, yes. Um, there are very many variants of NMC, and basically the ratio of nickel and cobalt and manganese is subject to development. When I did my master's thesis, there was basically only NMC 111, which is also the one uh, uh, mentioned here. But these days you have new types and some even high energy types like NMC 811. And there is even now a very new one, which is NMC 9 0 0.5 0 0.5. Okay, let's compare NMC and LFP. We already looked at the electrochemical potentials and we saw that NMC has a higher electrochemical potential. Of course, today we talk about cathodes, right? So we talk about positive electrodes. So if NMC has a higher electrochemical potential and it's the positive electrode, well, in that case, NMC batteries have also a higher nominal voltage than LFP. So what's typically in the market at the moment? I visited the International Automotive Fair in Munich uh, not long ago and the CATL showed some batteries and they had an NMC battery for battery electric vehicle with 186 amp hours at 310 watt hours per kilogram and 760 watt hours per liter, which is pretty amazing, I must say. The cycle life was mentioned to be above 1000 cycles. They also had an LFP variant with 126.5 amp hours at 181 watt hours per kilogram and 420 watt hours per liter. And the cycle life of this LFP variant was mentioned to be above 4000 cycles. So you can see a better cycle life for the LFP, but a much higher energy density for NMC. So we already said that LFP has a spinel structure. It's basically channels within a 3D structure and NMC is more like a layered structure and the lithium ions can move in between these layers. Well, we have higher current rates possible for NMC. We already also talked about the significant phase degradation of oxygen release at temperatures above 350 degrees Celsius and the onset of around 310 degrees Celsius. For NMC, this onset is 150 degrees Celsius maximum. So, in the high energetic NMCs like NMC 811 or 9 0 0.5 0 0.5 should have even lower onset temperatures for phase degradation due to this instability of the nickel. Okay, now I want to address two challenges of LFP, which we don't have for NMC. The first challenge, that's the voltage plateau of NMC. We have a plateau in intermediate SOC areas. Basically, at these intermediate state of charge values, the open circuit voltage does not change. And that means that state of charge determination based on voltage measurements only is quite challenging. Of course, what you do is you do Coulomb counting, basically measuring time and current, but Coulomb counting has limitations, especially for very long durations of these measurements. Okay, so the flat OCV curve in the middle of the state of charge area, that's quite uh, a challenge. The second challenge about which I want to have a talk, that's the memory effect. And some of you may be surprised. What memory effect with the lithium-ion batteries? Well, I would rather call it uh, a voltage anomaly. It's not like this typical memory effect like we know from uh, nickel-cadmium batteries, for example. No, um, we have something like a memory effect and basically repeated Partial charges lead to increased OCVs. So what do I mean? I mean, if you have a lithium-ion battery based on LFP and it's at the 0% state of charge and you charge it to like say 50% state of charge, you wait and you measure a certain open circuit voltage value. Now you discharge the battery to 0% state of charge and you charge it up again to 50% state of charge. Now you measure the voltage again and the voltage is a little higher than it was before at this 50% state of charge. This voltage anomaly effect is 
temperature dependent. First of all, the maximum voltage increase or maximum voltage anomaly depends on temperature and also how quickly this maximum voltage anomaly is reached with these partial charges. Okay, and basically, if you think about the voltage plateau in the middle, and then you have another inaccuracy due to the, so to say, this what we call the memory effect, it's a nightmare um, of state of charge determination based on uh, measuring the voltage of the battery only. Interestingly, this effect can be completely reversed if you just fully charge the LFP battery, then the effect is gone. Okay, well, these were two challenges for LFP, which we do not see for NMC. Let's have a look at the aging or the differences in aging of LFP based batteries and NMC based batteries. We will not consider the anode today because we talk about LFP and NMC. So we talk about the cathode and there is one effect that is very different for NMC and LFP. And this is something which we call transition metal dissolution. So what is happening when we have a transition metal dissolution? Well, transition metals from the cathode, for example, manganese and NMC has manganese, LFP does not have manganese. Manganese is known for getting a little unstable over time, so to say going into the electrolyte and traveling to the anode. And on the anode side, this manganese can influence the SEI in a way which benefits dendrite growth and you get a hazard for an internal short circuit. It's a similar effect to lithium plating, um, but it's not really that dominant in most aging scenarios. So that's one aging effect that you have for NMC that you simply don't have for LFP. We just talked about aging and I want to remind you of the two battery cells which were presented from CATL in Munich. Um, the NMC variant had a cycle life above 1000 cycles and the LFP battery had a cycle life mentioned to be above 4000 cycles. Obviously the energy density for the NMC battery is high. So we know that reducing the state of charge window actually improves the aging behavior of a battery a lot. So in most cases you do not really want to cycle your NMC battery between 0% state of charge and 100% state of charge, you will limit it to some extent, for example, 5 to 95 or, or something like that, or 10 to 90. It depends on the application. But basically, to reducing the state of charge window improves the aging a lot. So I remember one leading battery scientist in the world raising the question, do we even need LFP if we could just, so to say, cycle NMC at a reduced state of charge window because the cycled energy could be really comparable, right? And because of the reducing of the state of charge window, we would get more cycles out of this NMC variant. So the question which we should ask is the following. How do the total costs of ownership compare when cycling the same energy? And what we compare is an LFP battery and an NMC battery with a reduced state of charge window. Okay. I promise to say something about safety as well, and I will. So LFP is considered to be more safe. And let me quote one of the lecturer partners with whom I had an interview for the safety course, which my company offers. So Dr. Christensen said that anything that delays ignition after a thermal runaway, switches the hazard from fire to explosion. And let me repeat it because it's so important. Anything that delays ignition after thermal runaway, switches the hazard from fire to explosion. So 
We must say that LFP batteries tend to produce less gas during a uh, thermal runaway. That is true. But we also saw that LFP has a higher phase degradation on that temperature. It was around 310 degrees Celsius. For NMC, it was 150 degrees Celsius, which means for LFP, it's about 160 degrees Celsius higher than for NMC. So they don't burn that easily, right? But in the process of reaching the onset temperature of 310 degrees Celsius, LFP produces the gas and it's not burning. So, and this shifts the hazard towards explosion because you suddenly produce a lot of explosive or highly flammable poisonous gas. And this is a big problem, especially if you're in a confined space. So I'm not saying LFP is safer than NMC. I'm not saying NMC is safer than LFP. I'm saying always have a look at the full picture. Okay. Finally, I want to say something about production and recycling, but we will not go much into the details. One number that you should keep in your mind is that when you produce an NMC battery, the cathode, that's a big chunk of the total cost. So some literature says it's around 40%, some say it's even above 50%, or some say it's a little below 40 Anyway, the point is it's a big chunk of the total costs. So, and NMC, that's nickel, manganese, and cobalt, right? And nickel, manganese, and cobalt are just more expensive than iron which we find in LFP batteries, which means NMC batteries are more attractive to recycle than LFP batteries, just from, from an economic point of view. But we should also talk about the mining, for example, and the cobalt mining is a challenge and it's subject to ongoing discussions, especially if you think how cobalt is mined. A big amount of cobalt globally is in the Democratic Republic of Congo and the cobalt mining there is always subject to discussions. We must say that, please remember, the cobalt content of NMC got reduced over time, right? So I said when I did my masters, I had an NMC battery which had an NMC ratio from 1 to 1 to 1. Now the most modern technology, the 9 0.5, 0 0.5 variant has only a very, very small amount of cobalt. So this is reduced, but anyway, there is some cobalt in it and it's always a uh, subject of discussions. We are now at the end of the webinar. I hope you liked it a lot. And if you want to learn more, I want to make you aware of the next cohort of our bad Excel program, which is going to take place from November 6th to December 15th. It's a six week program on operation, testing and the safety of lithium ion batteries. We have online material like online videos, quizzes, and for example, some testing data from the battery lab, which you watch and analyze at your own convenience. And you can be quite flexible with your timing. We combine this with live scheduled online coaching sessions and Q&A sessions. So everyone can always ask their own individual questions in these Q&A sessions. And that's why we limit the number of participants to 15. That's right, one, five, 15. So it's super individual. Of course, you always get a certificate upon completion. So if it's something that is interesting for you, please follow the QR code or find the program via our webpage, greenactra.com. I will also put the link for you under the video in the description. That's all for today. Have a great day and I hope to see you in our next Bad Excel International. Bye bye.